and and another teammate um, that had a big impact on you was Darren Millay, and you've always spoken highly of him, and he, he really had a huge impact on just not you as a player but as a person. But what can you remember of uh, Millie yeah. and what you know? What he used to be around the club and how yeah. he used to play. Yeah. Oh, look, he was just a larger than life character. I mean, it's been well documented. Um, just a great player, um, cut down in the prime of his career really. Um, he was just an exceptional athlete, but he was a great athlete and a great player at the same time. Um, so he was, he was uh, ahead of his times in that way. Um, uh, it was fantastic for me too because he was such an extrovert and I was a bit of an introvert, not saying much. He's the one who gave me my nickname, Rowdy. I remember being out here one day and we're just about in this pocket here where we were going down. I think even Crackers Keenan was down there at the stage and and uh, and was calling me over to join their group and he said, Brownie, come down here and, and Pants said, no, it's not Brownie, it's Rowdy, you know, just instantly, you know, off the off the cuff and it just stuck ever since. And it's funny, even some of the young blokes who, who get drafted at the club now yeah, will we'll, we'll call me Rowdy. I find it quite... Um, quite funny at times, but uh, yeah, he had an enormous impact. He'd, um, he took me under his wing, so to speak, and because he was one wingman and I played on the other wing, and we'd go out to uh, out on the ground, and he'd grab me and we'd sort of walk slowly over to the wings, and I remember him saying, oh, let's just, you know, we'll just see who, when the opposition walk out, we'll see who goes to what wing, and you know, because he knew that someone would try and pick him up, and, uh, and he'd just have a little chat, and then, you know, off we'd go to our respective wings and, uh, and into it. But yeah, he had an enormous impact on my, uh, on my career. I got on really well with him, even though we were, you know, poles apart in, you know, in, in personalities and all that sort of stuff. But um, we had a lot of respect for him. And I, I guess a real honour for you was when, in uh, when you won the uh, the Darren Millane Award mm. at the at Copeland Trophy night. Uh, that must be pretty sp been a pretty special night for you. Yeah, it was. It was the first one. Um, so it, uh, as they all do, but it meant a hell of a lot. And um, I just, um, yeah, it was a great award to win. Um, you know, it was a teammate award um, from your peers, and um, no, I was over the moon. It was just, uh, it, was a, it was a fantastic um, honour for me to, to win that award. And then, and then later on in the, in the 90s, uh, it was I think it was at the end of the 96. You're, you're almost at the crossroads of your career. Uh, you know, I guess injuries. You're hampered by injuries, and you, you, I guess the name was in the paper that you didn't quite know if you were going to be at Collingwood in 97. And I think even Melbourne came after you. Can you remember a bit about that experience? Yeah, I can. Um, yeah, it was a situation, really, uh, pretty simply, where, yeah, I guess 90s, 90, the end of 95, I'd, uh, I'd had a few injuries, and then 96 again going into the season, I'd had some more injuries and just couldn't get going. Um, and, I, and in fairness, I guess to everyone, it probably looked like that my body was packing up a little bit. Um, I knew myself that it wasn't, um, and that I was okay, um, which is a bit frustrating well, you know yourself you're right to go, as long as you're a realist, and I think I am. Um, and, uh, and other people were sort of doubting. Um, so, you know, they were, they were keen only to give me a one or two year contract, I think it was, and, uh, and, uh, and I thought, you know, the whole time I'd been playing, I'd always been offered three year contracts, and, uh, and I was pretty keen to, you know, to, to get another one of those. And so it was, um, wasn't like it was a standoff, but it was a little bit of a, uh, uh, a situation where the club only wanted to give me one, I think it was, and you know I wanted more than that, and, and I was never going to go. But yeah, there were there were I think it was Melbourne that was was interested, um, and um, you know it was never going to be a situation I was going to leave. You know I'd never in my own mind ever ever go, um, and I never used that situation to my advantage. I was always upfront and honest, and um, and in the end I, I think I guess. Um, you know, I was, I was very grateful to the club that they, they ended up um, giving me a three-year contract, and so I was at 96 and a plant to, to 2000 anyway. So um, yeah, so um, it was resolved, and there wasn't really much in it. It was probably only a couple of weeks of paper in your window and, and talk. But I guess at that point again, when you know the chips were sort of against you and how you played, you come back in '97 and win the Copeland Trophy. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I did. Um, I guess yeah, I had a bit to prove. Once again, and um, and I was able to do that. Got my body right. Um, had a big pre-season, um, and I think myself was almost my best year um, out of my whole 14 years. I I, um, I dare to say maybe 94, or maybe 89, 94, but certainly 97. Um, uh, yeah, I I, um, I was really pleased with my year, and um, uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, it worked out well. And you that year, you were also 
captain 94 98 you're a captain of the club captain in Collingwood 42nd captain for the for this club mm. what, what, how does that sit with you oh that's just a huge honor um, you know as I said before to to win a premiership is what it's all about um, to actually captain the club um, that I barrack for as a kid I would never have dreamt you know I would never have dreamt that was going to happen so uh, just a huge honour, and it's something I look back on and, and, and very proud about. Yeah. And how does, I guess, that extra role change change you as a player in terms of how you go about your business on the field and maybe just even in practice? Well, it does change you because you well you have to change. Um, and I was I was always big on uh, in leadership. It's it's about um, it's about leading by example. I didn't you know, and and I was really confident that I could do that. I, I, I thought I always played my football. You know, as professionally as I could, trying to do the right thing, work really hard, or you know, being disciplined, all those things. And I thought if I could do that, um, then that was the best way for me to lead. Um, I remember Lee Matthews, and I, again, I remember it's funny sitting here looking out that just over near the race, just over there, um, Lee grabbed me and he said, "Look, um, are we going to go with you as captain?" Um, so he shook my hand and he said, um, "But I don't want you to change. You know, just the, we're rewarding you for um, the way you go about your footy." Um, and um, I said, yeah, no worries, fantastic. And, and I really took a lot out of that, thinking that, yep, they give me the job because of the way I've gone about my footy, so that's the way I'll continue, yeah. Um, you always said as a player that after, after you're done and you hung up the boots, you never coach. Mm. Do you remember saying that? Yeah, I do, yeah. Yeah, look, I think I was, um, yeah, and that's true. I think as a player, I was, uh, um, uh, even though, you know, I think being captain held me in good stead to, um, for life after footy, as I said, but as a player, I just didn't think about anything else but just playing. You know, I was just uh, just so single-minded on on how I can improve and be a good player and uh, and do the things to the best of my ability. That I didn't really, you know, I didn't think about anything, you know, work or anything outside of footy, let alone. And I just, I probably at the time didn't think I had the makeup, um, you know, to be a coach. Uh, Mick gave me the opportunity to be um, an assistant coach. Um, so my first year out of 40 I was an assistant to David Bonifant who's still here now as our conditioning coach um, and then the following year again uh, an, an assistant coach under Mick and until this season uh, or the last season uh, to be VFL coach I think what happens is you actually uh, uh, I think you grow um, as a person with the role and I, I started feeling more comfortable and more confident uh, in my uh, in my uh, myself my ability um, to to, uh, to coach, I guess, and then uh, I thought it was just a fantastic opportunity for me um, to test myself. I, I guess I'm not uh, your stereotype sort of coach in terms of, uh, I guess, what people think a coach might be. Um, I'm not loud, uh, boisterous, and I wasn't that as a player anyway, so I just I, I followed on from, from that vein as a player. And uh, now you've had a relationship with Collingwood for over 20 years, uh, you know, which is one of the longest going around for Collingwood. Mm. What, what has Collingwood meant to you as a, as a player and as a person and also with your family as well? Um, oh, look, it's just been my life, really. It's been everything I know. Um, it's been my, uh, uh, my profession, um, not only as a player, but as a coach now. So, as you say, for, you know, since 1980, well, I guess 1985, 86, I was in the under-19s senior football from 87 onwards and then from 2001 to now so far it's, it's just been my life it's been my whole um, the bulk of my life so you know when I've woken up in the morning from that time to when I end the day it's been about Collingwood um, I've never I've never had it um, other than when I played I had a, a job um, for four years um, but other than that it's just been about my work's been Collingwood and uh, so every time I get up in the morning to I finish the day it's been about Collingwood so yeah it's just been a massive massive part of my life and shaped the way I am and who I am I guess. Caught, but he gets his foot to the ball and kicks it to the front of the square oh nearly Brown Eston under pressure Brown will kick a goal and if that doesn't bring the roof off the MCG nothing 